Hello, welcome to demonstration video number one describing the new OpenWire Visual Live Bindings technology from Mitov Software. What I'm going to show you is a beta technology preview and you can download it now at mitov.com. The first video will cover only what is necessary to demonstrate the basic concepts and what it can do for you and how you get started. To save time I've added most of what we need to this form and I'm going to add specifically the OpenWire pins and make connections. This is Delphi XE2 running on Windows 8 on a Mac. And after you've installed the OpenWire Visual Binding download, you will see at least two new features in the IDE. First, down here on the Object Inspector in the lower left, you'll see a link called New Visual Live Binding. And if I click that link, it will launch the OpenWire Pin Editor, which we use to add pins. For instance, right now, if I launched it, I could add a pin to Form 1 or a pin to this circle shape or this, this number edit or whatever. In addition to this new visual live bindings link, you'll see over here there's an open wire tab. This is the open wire editor. And after we add pins to our components, we can connect those pins in this editor visually. So let's go back and get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is to add a pin so that this number edit value is conveyed to a float animation attached to this circle shape. If you see over here on the circle nested beneath it as a child we have float animation number one. And that float animation will regulate the rotation angle of that circle. So this number in this number box is going to be the rotation angle and we want to send it over to that float animation. In addition, there's a label right here. Actually, let me give it some text real quick. This is label 2. Okay, label 2 is going to display whatever we have in this edit box. So we can edit it here. It will change the label and it will affect the rotation angle on the shape. So let's just do that right now. Again, I can click on this new Visual Live Bindings link or I can right click when I have a component selected and I can pick new visual live bindings here. Okay, this is the number box and the value property is what I'm interested in. So I'll click on value and you see I have a choice of pins here, a float source pin, float sync pin, float multi-sync pin, we'll discuss that later, and a float state pin. Because this number edit box is going to be the source of data, I'm going to click float source pin. Double click. That will be the source. I want that number to be conveyed to the stop value property of float animation 1. So I've clicked on stop value and now I'll come over to float sync pin and double click. In addition, I want that value to be conveyed to the text property of label 2. So I'll click on text. And notice these are string pins, not float pins, because obviously text is a string property. But because of implicit type conversion, I can send that float value to a string sync pin. Double click. Okay, now I've added three pins, one source and two syncs. I'll close this. Now notice in addition to adding those pins, it added this open wire pin binding manager here. We'll move this up here out of the way. It's a non-visual component. But basically, it uh, controls the editor and keeps track of all the pins that you've added and connected. Okay. Now, we've added pins, but we have not connected, connected them. The open wire pin editor, which you just looked at when we launched with this link here, or with a right click and pop up menu. The pin editor gets you the editor to, to add pins. The open wire editor is the editor to connect pins. Okay so we come over here and these are our two sinks circle and label and our source is number box. So we click on the source pin. Notice when we hover compatible sync pins are highlighted. So I'll click on the source pin, release and then go over to the stop value pin of float animation and click to connect. Repeat for the label number two. Okay, 
So we have our float animation connected to the number box and our label. Now let's run this and see it work. Okay, there's no angle or zero angle, so there's no movement. We'll change that to 90 degrees. You can see movement of 90 degrees. Notice when I delete, it goes to zero, 180, 360. And the value is displayed on the label and gets delivered to the float animation uh, rotation value property. Okay. Next we're going to look at these two text inputs here. And what I want to happen is that when I type text in one, it's bound to the other so that uh, each one acts as both a source and a sink. Okay, the way we do that is bring up our pen editor. And we want the text property of this edit. Now we don't want source or sync pins this time, we want the string state pin. And that is because we want state to go in both directions. When we edit either one of them, we want the other one to change. So I'll double click string state pin on edit one and edit two text properties state pin. Run the application. And you can see that when we type in the left side, oh, I forgot something. That's a good point though, so I'll just go ahead and leave that there. We need to connect the pins. <laughs> no information gets conveyed unless we connect the pins. Now when I add, connected those state pins, notice that OpenWire adds a state dispatcher. And the purpose of that is to share state across all objects connected to this particular uh, dispatcher. In other words, if I added another label or text or something, it could also uh, display the same state. Let's run it again. Okay, so again, again, when I type in the left side, it goes to the right and vice versa. Okay, so we see those working. And again, our angle is working. So we have source sync pins above and two state pins here. Lastly, we're going to connect the on click handler of this button, which says start. And it will start the color animation of this rectangle, which is this rectangle that has a color key animation attached. So when we click start, we want to call the start procedure on the animation attached to the rectangle. When we click stop, we want it to call stop at current procedure. So let's go ahead and add new visual light binding pins. It is open. And rather than scroll through this long list of properties and events and methods, let's just type the name of the event handler. Okay. On click T notify event. Okay. We'll select that. By the way, when I type down here, that was a filter. It filters all of the tree contents to whatever contains the match. So on click, and we're offered a clock source pin, which is exactly what we want. It, it will be the source of the event. So we'll double click here. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and get button one. We'll add a clock pin to that. So button one will start it and button two will stop it. Now what will they connect to? They're going to connect to the start procedure of color key animation procedure start, which has a clock sync pin. And we'll double click that. Button two, we want to connect to the stop. So I'll type stop in the filter and we'll connect it to stop at current. It allows us to stop on a specific color. Okay, stop at current. So we have our pins added to the buttons and to the color key animation which is attached to the rectangle. So let's go over to OpenWire Editor, come over to our 
um, buttons and animation component and we'll connect on click button one to start on click button two to stop at current and just to make the presentation a little clearer we'll move these over here so that you can see the entire application let's run it okay now we click start and the animation starts it's a red and yellow color keyed animation back and forth and then I can stop it on any particular color I want and then start again stop so we have pins connected to events and wires going over to pins that are connected to procedure calls such as start and stop we have those are both excuse me those are both clock pins clock source pins for the events and clock sync pins on the procedure call we have state pins for maintaining state across these editor boxes and we have source and sync pins for um, conveying the angle to this animation one of the great benefits of this technology is to get the big picture of your application when we look at this uh, diagram here we can see that there's a button component with an on click and a signal is delivered from that to the start procedure of this animation which is attached to a rectangle that's about as clear as it gets we have this number box value which is displayed in a label and conveyed to the stop value of this animation you can see that the behavior and the data structure of your application classes are conveyed in this diagram and with these two edit boxes this shared text state um, is useful to, to see where uh, for instance if you have multiple observers of a single data value uh, that's very useful to have state pins for that okay that concludes this demonstration video number one there is a second demonstration uh, covering database connections uh, client data set string grids and so forth and be sure to check out that video thank you